firstly, I'm going to just briefly go over the formation of soil carbonates. Um, shown here is the chemical reaction for carbonate precipitation. Calcium ions um, can be derived from dust, the dissolution of minerals, and rainwater infiltration. Uh, the carbon and bicarbonate is supplied from soil CO2, which is comprised of atmospheric CO2 and respired CO2. As a result, the delta C13 value of soil carbonate uh, changes depending on amounts and delta C13 values of atmospheric and respired CO2. So the four processes listed here um, affect soil carbonate values. So I'll now just quickly go through them and discuss how changes in all of them relate to the observed increase in delta C13 values uh, towards the end of the Pliocene in our record from Jia Chan. Um, additionally, the processes outlined here by the blue box are known to change due to aridification. So as I go through each of the processes in the upcoming slides, um, I'll be trying to relate these changes to increasing aridity from the mid to late Pliocene, which is suggested to occur as a result of the weakening of the summer monsoon. So firstly, the delta C13 value of uh, C3 derived organic matter uh, are known to change due to water stress. As illustrated here by this figure from Cohn et al, um, 2010, there's a smaller isotopic fractionation that occurs during photosynthesis for C3 plants in drier ecosystems. Um, and so as a result, delta C13 values of C3 plants in, again, drier ecosystems tend to be um, heavier or larger than those from wetter ecosystems. Uh, therefore, during aridification, as a delta C, delta C13 value of soil organic matter would increase, we would also expect the delta C13 value of soil carbonate to increase. So respiration rate also affects soil carbonate delta C13 values because it affects the relative proportions of respired and atmospheric CO2 that make up the soil CO2. Um, the carbon dioxide generated from the breakdown of C3-derived organic matter has significantly lighter de delta C13 values compared to atmospheric CO2. Um, so soil CO2 uh, delta C13 values depend heavily on the relative proportion of these carbon dioxide sources, and that in turn is affected by the respiration rate. During aridification, respiration rates of C3 plants decrease due to their sensitivity to um, water loss. As respiration rates decrease, soil CO2 values would shift towards the atmospheric CO2 end member. And as these values increase, delta C13 values of soil carbonates would also increase. Uh, because C3 and C4 plants have uh, very different delta C13 values due to their differing photosynthetic pathways, soil carbonates would have delta C13 values representative of the dominant vegetation. Um, similarly, we could also potentially identify a shift from a, one vegetation type to the other by a shift in soil carbonate delta C13 values. Um, C4 vegetation tends to dominate more arid in more arid ecosystems due to their more advanced pathway. Um, so during aridification, we may ex expect to see a shift from C3 to C4 vegetation, um, just because they're more equipped for that ecosystem. So as a result, soil organic matter delta C13 values would move more towards the C4 um, end member and reflect that shift. So as soil CO2 delta C13 values increase, um, soil carbonate delta C13 values would also increase under a shift from C3 to C4 dominated ecosystem. Um, finally, changes in atmospheric CO2 concentration also affect soil carbon, carbon dioxide delta C13 values because it ultimately affects the proportion of atmospheric uh, to respired CO2 um, it, that makes up soil carbon dioxide. 